I welcome you to my channel, subscribe and listen to my new stories every day. The clang of the weights dropping echoed through the gym, a final punctuation to a grueling session. I wiped the sweat from my brow and took a deep breath, ready to escape the sterile scent of chlorine and rubber. The evening air was a welcome contrast as I headed back to the house, my muscles aching pleasantly from the workout. I fumbled with my keys at the front door, the familiar clink of metal a routine sound. As I stepped inside, the warmth of the living room greeted me, a stark contrast to the cool breeze outside. My wife, Emma, was supposed to be home. I called out her name, but there was only silence. I dropped my gym bag by the door and began my usual post-workout ritual. As I walked through the living room, a stray jacket draped over the back of a chair caught my eye. It was an unfamiliar shade of blue, too bright for Emma's taste. My heart skipped a beat. I'd seen every piece of clothing she owned, and this one wasn't hers. Curiosity gnawed at me. I picked up the jacket, its fabric heavy and smooth. I searched through the pockets, hoping for some mundane clue, maybe a receipt or a piece of gum. Instead, I found a business card tucked neatly into the inner pocket. The card was sleek, the kind that screams sophistication. It read, Isabella. Private entertainer. By appointment only. Below was a number, and a subtle illustration of what appeared to be a suggestive pose. My pulse quickened. The realization hit me like a punch to the gut. I sank onto the sofa, staring at the card. My mind raced, piecing together fragmented conversations and late-night absences. Emma had been vague about her outings, always with an excuse ready. My stomach churned with betrayal as I realized what this meant. I heard the faint sound of the front door opening and Emma's voice filtering through. Her tone was light, almost too cheerful. I quickly stuffed the card back into the jacket and placed it back on the chair, my heart pounding. I needed to confront her, but I had to do it carefully. Emma entered the room, her face lighting up when she saw me. Hey, how was the gym, she asked, slipping her coat off. It was fine, I replied, trying to keep my voice steady. I found something today. Before I could finish, she interrupted, oh, I forgot my jacket at the cleaners. I was going to pick it up tomorrow. Her words sounded rehearsed, and the cheery smile didn't reach her eyes. You left it here, I said, my voice growing colder. But I found something in it. Emma's face paled. What do you mean? I hesitated, watching the shift in her expression. A business card. It's not just any card. It's for a private entertainer. Her breath caught. I. Don't, I cut her off, rising from the sofa. Just don't. I know enough. Emma's eyes filled with tears. It's not what you think. I'm done with the lies, I said firmly. You've betrayed me, Emma. And now, I'm going to make sure you understand what that really means. Her protests fell on deaf ears as I walked out the door. The pain in my chest hardened into resolve. I knew the path ahead would be harsh, but betrayal demanded a response. I would make sure that she, and everyone around her, knew the true cost of her deceit. The next morning, I'm awake before dawn, the remnants of the previous evening's confrontation still fresh in my mind. The house is eerily quiet, the calm before a storm I know is coming. I can't stop thinking about that business card, the betrayal, and the growing plan for retribution. I head to the kitchen, making coffee with mechanical precision. The rhythmic drip of the coffee maker is a soothing backdrop to my racing thoughts. As the aroma fills the kitchen, Emma's footsteps echo through the hallway. She's early, just like me, though her expression is strained. Good morning, she says softly, her voice tentative. I glance up from the coffee pot. Morning. There's a tension in the air, thick and suffocating. Emma is trying to gauge my mood, her eyes darting nervously. Can we talk? I nod, gesturing for her to sit at the kitchen table. Sure. 
But I need you to be honest with me, Emma. She takes a seat, her hands clasped tightly in her lap. I know you're upset, she begins, her voice trembling. I didn't mean for things to get this far. I made a mistake. A mistake. I repeat, disbelief heavy in my tone. You're not just talking about a mistake. You're talking about betrayal. How long has this been going on? Emma's eyes brim with tears. It's been a few months. I was lonely, and I didn't know how to fix it. I thought. You thought what? I cut in, unable to hide the bitterness. That sneaking around and lying would fix our problems. She takes a shaky breath. No. I was wrong. But it was never supposed to hurt you. I wanted to end it, but I didn't know how to tell you. I can't contain the anger that's boiling beneath the surface. End it? After months of deceit, you think a few apologies will make it right? Emma looks down, her voice barely a whisper. I'll do whatever it takes to make it right. Please, just give me a chance. I shake my head. It's too late for that. The damage is done, and it's time to deal with the consequences. I can see the realization dawn on her face. She knows I'm not going to back down. I take a deep breath, trying to steady my nerves. I'm not just going to walk away. I need to make sure that this isn't just forgotten. Her eyes widen. What are you saying? I'm saying that I'm going to make sure everyone knows what's really been going on, I say, my voice firm. I want everyone to understand the truth. I'm not going to let you just sweep this under the rug. Emma's face pales further. Are you threatening me? No, I say, leaning closer. I'm making a promise. You've chosen your path, and now you have to face the consequences. And trust me, it's going to be painful. Emma starts to cry, her sobs muffled by her hands. Please, don't do this. I stand up, my resolve unshaken. It's already done, Emma. The only thing left is to see it through. I walk out of the kitchen, leaving Emma behind. My mind is a whirlwind of thoughts and plans. I need to be careful, calculated. There's a lot at stake, and I can't afford to make any mistakes. As I leave for work, the weight of what's to come hangs heavily on me. I'm determined to see this through, to make sure Emma understands the full impact of her actions. It's not just about revenge, it's about ensuring that the betrayal she's inflicted is met with the reckoning it deserves. The day drags on in a blur of office meetings and mundane tasks. My mind keeps circling back to Emma and the confrontation that still stings with raw emotion. I can't focus on anything except the image of that business card and the betrayal it represents. My resolve hardens with every passing hour. As I leave the office, my phone buzzes with a message from Emma. Can we talk again? Please. I need to explain everything. I ignore it, knowing that any further conversation will only delay the inevitable. Tonight, I need to put my plan into action. I drive home with a heavy heart but a clear mind, focused on the steps I need to take. When I walk through the front door, the house feels different, more like a stage set for the final act of a drama. Emma is sitting in the living room, her eyes red from earlier tears. She looks up with a mixture of hope and dread as I enter. I need to talk to you about something, she says, her voice trembling. I nod, closing the door behind me. Sure. But first, I want you to understand that we're past the point of reconciliation. Emma's face falls, but she nods in resignation. Okay. What do you want? I want you to understand that the fallout from this will be significant, I say, my voice steady. I'm not going to keep this quiet. She stands up, desperation in her eyes. You don't have to do this. We can work this out. Just give me a chance to fix things. Fix things. I ask, incredulous. It's too late for that. The damage is done, and I need to make sure everyone knows the truth. 
Emma's shoulders slump. What are you going to do? I take a deep breath, steadying myself. I'm going to tell everyone, our friends, family, your colleagues, about what's been happening. They deserve to know what you've been hiding. Emma's eyes widen in panic. You can't do that. It will ruin my life. That's the point, I say coldly. I want you to understand the full consequences of your actions. Emma tries to reach out to me, but I step back, my resolve unshaken. I need you to leave. I can't stay here and watch you pretend everything is okay. Emma's tears flow freely now. Please, don't do this. I'll do anything to make it right. I shake my head. It's over, Emma. I'm done with the lies and deceit. Emma collapses onto the couch, her sobs filling the room. I walk out, closing the door behind me. My heart is heavy, but I know I'm doing the right thing. I spend the evening drafting an email, carefully composing a message that details everything I've learned. I want to make sure the truth is clear and undeniable. After hours of writing and editing, I finally hit send, sending the email to our entire contact list, friends, family, and anyone who might need to know the truth. The relief that follows is bittersweet. I feel a sense of finality, but the weight of what I've done hangs heavily over me. I know there will be fallout, questions, anger, and pain. But I also know that this is the only way to ensure that Emma truly understands the gravity of her actions. As I finish sending the email, my phone buzzes with a flurry of notifications. Messages of support and shock start pouring in, along with a few angry replies. I brace myself for what's to come, knowing that the path I've chosen will lead to difficult conversations and strained relationships. For now, I sit in the quiet of the house, reflecting on the whirlwind of emotions that has unfolded. The storm is far from over, and the consequences of my actions are just beginning to unfold. The truth is out there, and the road ahead will be one of reckoning and retribution. The weeks following the email are a storm of chaos and confrontation. Friends and family are torn between shock and sympathy, with some siding with me and others with Emma. The social media firestorm I sparked has been relentless. Emma's career and personal life are in tatters, and her once vibrant social circle has fractured. One evening, after a particularly exhausting day of dealing with fallout and heated discussions, I sit alone in the dimly lit living room, my mind buzzing with the intensity of it all. I hear a knock on the door. It's late, and I wasn't expecting anyone. I open it to find Emma standing on the doorstep, looking haggard and defeated. Can we talk? she asks, her voice barely a whisper. I hesitate but finally nod, stepping aside to let her in. We sit across from each other in the silence of the living room. Emma's eyes are swollen from crying, her once polished appearance now disheveled. I know you're angry, she starts, her voice trembling. I never meant for it to end like this. You didn't just make a mistake, I reply coldly. You tore apart everything we had. And now you want to talk. I came to explain, Emma says, desperation clear in her tone. There's something you don't know. I lean forward, intrigued despite myself. What is it? Emma takes a deep breath. The stripper, the one you found the business card for, she was actually an undercover investigator hired by a private firm. I stare at her, confusion and anger battling within me. What are you talking about? Emma's face is a mask of regret. I didn't know at first. I thought it was just an affair. But then I found out she was working on a case, against a criminal organization. I didn't want to involve you. I was trying to protect you. Protect me? I ask, incredulous. By betraying me? I was scared, Emma says, tears streaming down her face. I thought if I could keep you away from this, you'd be safe. But it all spiraled out of control. I sit back, processing her words. The shock of the revelation hits me hard, but the betrayal is still fresh, and the damage has been done. 
The anger I feel isn't just about the affair, it's about the deceit and manipulation. If you're telling the truth, I say slowly, why didn't you come clean earlier? I was afraid, Emma admits. I didn't want you to think I was involved in something dangerous. My mind races as I weigh her words. The complexity of the situation only fuels my anger. I know I can't undo the damage that's been done, but I can't let her off the hook so easily. I've decided, I say, standing up. You and I are finished. I can't live with this betrayal. And I won't let it go unpunished. Emma's face falls as she realizes the finality of my decision. Please, don't do this. We can work this out. I'll do anything to make it right. You've already done enough, I reply coldly. It's over. I escort Emma to the door, my resolve unshaken. She looks back at me with a mix of hope and despair before stepping out into the night. I watch her leave, feeling a grim sense of closure. The next few days are a whirlwind of legal and personal battles. I make sure that Emma's involvement with the private investigator is exposed to the world, revealing the full extent of the deceit. I also take measures to protect myself from any potential repercussions from the criminal organization she was supposedly involved with. The final act of revenge comes when I expose Emma's deceit to her closest friends and family, revealing her attempt to manipulate the situation. The fallout is swift and unforgiving. Emma is left isolated and alone, her reputation in ruins. In the end, the revelation of the truth doesn't change the past, but it gives me a sense of vindication. The betrayal has been laid bare, and Emma's deceit has been met with the harsh retribution it deserves. As I close the door on that chapter of my life, I realize that the true cost of betrayal is not just the broken trust but the unraveling of relationships and lives. The road ahead is uncertain, but I'm determined to move forward, leaving behind the shadows of deception and betrayal. The story ends not with reconciliation but with a stark reminder of the consequences of deceit. The path I chose was one of pain and retribution, but it was a path I had to take to find closure and reclaim my life.